so hello and welcome to this lesson this happens to be our 18th lesson in our study of scientific computing too so in this video we'll be talking about git and github okay so you know um mostly when you are working on a very very big project you can't do it alone you'd have to do it with other people and collaborate on that work so to be able to do a collaborative work you need a version control system or two to help you do that that's the reason why as a programmer or as someone into computer it it's very important for you to know about these two okay so We'll be talking about get but you know before you can really understand get you have to understand version control systems so we'll also be talking about version control systems then we'll talk about github and look at get and github you know it confuses a lot of people a lot of things they are the same so you would want to know if they are or they are not and what are the differences between them okay so I'm with Ukraine Randall, a final year student of mathematics K and USD. And I'll be taking you through this lesson. So when we talk about Git, Git is a free open source distributed version control system to design to handle everything from small to large projects with speed and efficiency. So the most important thing I have to note here is that Git is free, it's open source, and more importantly, it's a distributed version control system too. That helps us to handle everything from small to large products with speed and efficiency. So when we start talking about version control system, you will get to know what we mean by distributed version control system, okay? So Git was created by Linus Torvalds in 2005 to develop the Linux kernel. And it also serves as an important distributed version control, as I said. So before one can understand what Git is, we first have to walk through what we mean by version control systems. Okay. So what are version control systems? So version control is the management of changes to documents, computer programs, large websites, and other collection of information, right? So it helps us to manage changes to files, okay? So there are two types of ver version control systems. In some sources, you find three, but mainly it is two. So we have the centralized version control system and a distributed version control system. As I said, in some sources, you find local version control system, but mainly we have two of them: the centralized version control systems and the distributed version control systems. So what are they? Right. So when you talk about the centralized version control system, what it does is that it uses a central server to store all files and enables team collaboration. So it works on a single repository to which users can directly access a central server. All right. So don't worry, you will get this with time, okay? I'm going to explain this using a diagram and I think that will help a lot. So for now, please follow. So even though it seems pretty convenient to maintain a single repository, it has some major drawbacks. And some of them are, it is not locally available, meaning you always need to be connected to a network to perform any change or any version. And since everything is centralized, in any case of the central server getting crashed or corrupted, it will result in losing the entire data of the project. 
so this is when distributed version control system comes to the rescue it's because of these drawbacks of the centralized version control system okay so some examples of the centralized version control systems are concurrent version system cvs subversion and perforce so of all the version control systems that we have concurrent version system is the oldest okay so this is how the centralized version control system works okay all right so there would be a central server so this is it the repository the central server okay then from the central server all those working on that particular project can access the data from the central server when you are connected towards the internet so you can see that we have workstation or pc1 here workstation or pc2 here workstation or pc3 here so in this diagram we have three people working on the same project right so the project is on this server this central server here so when the person using the pc1 wants to work on it the person will have to be connected to the internet or to a network and get a copy from the central um, server and work on it after working on it then the person updates it and it's updated in the central server the same applies to this person and that so that's how the centralized version control system works okay so there is a central server somewhere which is a host of all our files so when i want to work on it i have to be connected to a network then go there and do some updates and it remains there so i wouldn't have a local copy of it on my device so whenever i want to use it i'll have to be connected to um a network and then work on it okay so you could see that because the only copy is on the central server when the central server gets corrupted or crashed we've lost everything and also when there is no network connectivity that means you can't work on it so this makes it not convenient and as a result of that the distributed version control system came in okay so now let us go to the distributed version control system and how it works and how it helps improve these drawbacks okay so for the distributed version control systems they are they do not necessarily rely on a central server to store all versions of a project file so in distributed version control system every contributor has a local copy or clone of the main repository right in their local machine that they are using so that is everyone maintains a local repository of their own which contains all the files and metadata present in the main repository so quite the opposite of the centralized version control system with a distributed version control system even though there is a central server somewhere which has the project file each contributor also has the same thing the same copy on his or her local device all right so now let's just go through the advantages of this system so because the contributors have a copy on their local machine it means that all operations except pull and push so pull is when we want to pull the data from the main repository and push is when you want to send it back to the main repository so those are the only ones which need internet connectivity aside that the rest are very fast because the two only needs to access the hard drive and not a remote server hence you do not always need an internet connection that is with the distributed version control system then also committing new changes sets can be done locally without manipulating the data on the main repository once you have a group of changes set 
you can then push them all at once so because you have a local copy on your device that means that you can always play with that one it is when you want to update it that you can update it on the central server so that means that when you are making changes to the one on your local drive right your hard drive it does not affect the changes in the hard drive so it makes it very simple then since every contributor has a full couple of their project repository they can store changes with one another if they want to get some feedback before affecting changes in the main repository it's self-explanatory and the last point we'll talk about is if the central server gets crashed at any point of time the lost data can easily be recovered from any one of the contributors local repository so you realize that in the case of the centralized version control system everything was on the central server so in the case when the central server gets crashed that means we've lost it but with the distributed version control system because each of the contributors has a local copy on their drive even in the case of losing or the drive um, the central server getting crashed or being corrupted we will still be able to get the data from one of the contributors because they will have it on their drive okay so now let's look at examples of distributed version control system so get is an example of it mercuria and baza right so that means that this should tell you how git works because git is a, a distributed version control system so now let us look at a diagram for the distributed version control system okay so this is how it looks like okay so we have a central server here all right and we have workstation one here workstation two here and workstation three here so you could see that this is the central server which has the repository right but each of the workstations or pcs has a local copy on their drive so this is a main repository but this is the local copy of it for the workstation or pc1 this is a local copy for workstation or pc2 and this is a local um version the one stored in the hard drive of workstation 3 right so that means that if they want to make any changes if they want to work on it the person using workstation 1 works on the one on his local drive right the local copy that he has the clone that he has the one on workstation 2 that same so after making changes updating and the rest if they are sure of what they've done and they want to update it to the main repository that's the central server then they do that so you see that means that in the event that the central server gets crashed or corrupted we can still have the data here or the file here so this is what makes the distributed version control system better than the centralized okay so now we know that git is a distributed version control tool that supports distributed nonlinear workflows by providing data assurance for developing quality software and let's look at some features of git so it is free and open source so that means that you are free to use it and it is released under the general public license open source lines okay then the speed it is very fast so since you do not have to connect to any network for performing all operations except push and pull it completes all tasks really fast then it is scalable so it is scalable in a sense that in the future if the number of collaborations increase gate can easily handle this increase okay so that means that it scales to what you want it to do then it is reliable because even in a case where the main repository gets crashed you will still have something with your local drive right then it is secure it uses um, the SHA-1 
um, the secure hash function for hashing, right? That's it hashing algorithm. So, Git is the most popular version control system among other version control tools available in the markets like Apache, Subversion, Concurrent Version Systems, Mercuria, ETC. So, in large companies, products are generally developed by developers all around the world. And to ena enable communication among them, Git is the solution. So some companies that use Git for version control are Facebook, Yahoo, Quora, Twitter, eBay, Microsoft, and many more. Okay. So now let's look at Git versus GitHub. So is Git the same as GitHub? So the answer is no. Git is not GitHub. You have to know that. So what's the difference? You know, Git is just a version control system that manages and tracks changes to your source code. Whilst GitHub is a cloud-based hosting platform that manages all your Git repositories. Okay, so you could recall that when we were talking about Git, we said it was a distributed version control system. And even though you have a local copy of everything on your device, you still push it to a central repository, right? A central server. And GitHub just happens to be that repository for the Git files, okay? So Git and GitHub are closely related but have some key differences. So unlike Git, GitHub is exclusively cloud-based. So with that one, you have to be called, we said that it is a cloud-based hosting platform that manages all your Git repositories. So that means that before you can use GitHub, you need internet connection. If not, you can't. Then also, unlike Git, GitHub is a for-profit service. All the basic repository hosting features are available at no cost to those who are willing to create a user profile. And GitHub is owned by Microsoft. So that's it for this lesson. So in the next lesson, which happens to be lesson 19, we are going to talk about some Git commands, right? So this Git we are talking about, how can you use it? So we will cover the following. How to get the Git itself and some Git commands. And it's going to be very, very interactive and nice, okay? So... See you in the next lesson.